Hi and welcome back to Programming with R and MATLAB. My name is Jan and I'm teaching assistant in finance at Stockholm Business School. Today we are going to start a first section which is called basics and we're going to start it with variables. We're going to speak, we're actually going to say what is a variable, which type of variables exist in MATLAB and R. We're going to take a look at our example and at the end I'm going to give you some tips. So what is variable? Variable is something which can change its value during the whole execution of the program. It also can be a mean of storing information during the execution of a pro program. So let's say x equal 10. In this, in this example x is our variable and after some execution it may become equal to 20. So what are variable types and what types exist? There are four types of variables. It's numbers, which we have seen before, words, or also called strings, uh, matrices or vectors, and uh, struct. And you may ask which we're going to use in our example. We're going to use all of them. So numbers. Numbers, it can be any anything. It can be sharp ratio, for example. It can be our stock price, etc. Uh, usually, when we write x equal 10, it's understandable for us. But computer sees it in a little bit different way. So it creates, when, when you write x equal 10, it creates kind of two cells and writes x and 10 in each of the cell. And then you have a cell which is called x and uh, equal to 10. So another another type of a variable is string or sentences, or words. It, for example, in our case it can be ticker or the name of the stock. So how it is done? You may think it's so just when you write x for example equal hello, you may think just analogously that it will create a cell and will write hello. Well, it's partially it's true. It will write it in this manner. Uh, so these numbers over here, they are actually representing um, each letter in the in the word hello. And actually, they can be addressed separately. But we'll speak over it a little bit later. And this is why it is quite important that you are aware of the special characters like, as you can see now on the screen. Uh, be really careful uh, while using them, because they sometimes they may be not the best characters to use and they may mess up your code and mess up your pro program. Then, matrices and vectors. It can be historical prices. So think over it as a table in Excel. You put a data in the table, you pretty much put a data in the matrix. So each time I'm going to speak about matrix and vector, try to imagine Microsoft Excel and the spreadsheet and how the data is aligned in there. So, and when you, for example, create a matrix of 10, 12, and 15, it is created, again, big cell, which is called X, and then subcells where 10, 12, or 15 is going to be written. Moreover, each of these subcell can be has a identification number or ID number, or index number, which can, uh, re which is which refer to these 10. So, for example, if you want to access 10, you have to say, pick the first element in vector x. The same with 15. Pick the third element in vector 15. Also, it can be written in this manner. So, struct. Well, struct, think of or list in um, R, think over it as a small database. It's going to be an aggregate of all other things. So, let's think over a stock or actier. It's, we will call it a struct because it will have some features. So, it has ticker. For example, let's say Atlas Copco, ATCO. Then it has prices, which are the historical prices. Like here, it's just a 
random numbers, which presumably should be prices. Then it it will have a moving averages and sharp ratio and trainer ratio. And this is actually how we're going to refer to each of the stock. We're going to collect and to, to collect the stock ticker here. Then we're going to collect the prices. Then we calculate the moving averages, sharp ratio, and trainer ratio, and we will write everything and store it in one struct. Why it's done like that? Well, the thing is that it's much easier to refer to different stock to different stocks by using this way. Then you can just say like, okay, I'm writing stock. I'm picking this first stock. And I have everything. I have its ticker, prices, moving average, sharp ratio, trainer ratio, just in one place. So let's take a look at our example. Let's say just for this particular case that we have hundred stocks. In uh, our example, we're going to have more of them, but just for representativity, we're going to use a little bit less of the stocks so that we can still see how it will work. It doesn't actually matter how many stocks I'm writing in here, but just so that you know. So, and this is going to represent all the stocks which have we have on the Stockholm Stock Exchange. And each of these stocks, stock 1, stock 2, stock 3, stock 4, would be a struct, which will have ticker, which is going to be a string, or a name, which is going to be a string, prices, which is matrix, moving averages, which is also going to be a matrix, then we have sharp ratio, number, and trainer ratio, number. Uh, why would why do we need ticker? Or to, uh, because we would like to identify when we don't want to say like invest in the stock number thirty four. We would like to know invest in Atlas Copco, for example. Uh, then we're going to have our portfolio, which will consist from ten stocks. But in this example, I shrink it up to four stocks. It doesn't matter that much for now, but. And then we will just select, link the stocks in our portfolio to the stocks we have in our general, let's say, database or on the stock exchange. So pretty much in our portfolio it will be written, okay, I'm investing in stock one, which is a stock, in, a stock one in all the stocks list, and so on. And it's going to be matrices these two things are going to be matrices and we actually it's very interesting because uh, it's going to be a matrix of struct so it's going to be a really uh, complicated database eventually so uh, and at the end now I'm going to give you some tips about how to name a variable so first variable has to be one word and example it can be let's say we want to name standard deviation it can be just written as a standard deviation SD standard F or STD uh, I would not recommend to name it as SD or STD because it it can interfere with the built-in functions in the programs standard dev and standard deviation is much better because there is no into kind of overlapping with the program then also make them short but they have to make but they have still make sense when or because you're going to have more than one variable and this is why it's quite important that you use uh, as much understandable w uh, variables as possible then if you have multiple variables use numbers like standf1, standf2 and standf3 and do not use points or stat variable with uh, slash use, do not use dollars or any other special characters and names and do not use special characters like uh, Swedish alphabet or, uh, or etc and uh, Yes, variables are case sensitive.
So standard deviation written in B in capital letters is not the same as standard deviation written in small letters. So press thank you for attention and press here to play next video. Have a nice day. Goodbye.